David Mason, the Director of Public Health for the Town of Sandwich, and we're doing uh, public service announcement number 27 today. With uh, It's on, and we're going to discuss the reopening of the schools in town here. We have Dr. Pamela Gould, the Superintendent of Schools, with us. Uh, Dr. Bemis, uh, Ryan Bemis, who is the uh, school physician and also the public health physician. And we have Chief Burke with us here today, who is going to open up uh, initiate the conversation and provide us with the status of COVID numbers to this day. Thank you, Dave. Good morning. August 26th, uh, we do have one positive case. We were at zero for a bit, but we were notified yesterday of a positive case. So we're at one over 100 recoveries and still the three deaths. So we're still uh, where we want to be. All right. So the, uh, and I believe it has to do with the medical situation Correct. also. Yep. So that, that's good that it's not a community type, uh, type spread issue. The, uh, all right, so let's start with uh, Dr. Gould with regards to opening the schools. You, you wanna hit it off and then we'll hit a few topics as you go. Sure, sure. Uh, just overall, I, I, as I've, we go over it with our, our admin team, we were saying about this, you feel like for the past couple of months, we were kind of at this big macro level and we're really bringing it down now. We've got the plan in place. We've communicated the plan that's on our website. Uh, we've sent it into the Department of Education and now it's, it's taking the time to really make sure that our buildings are building specific is everything that we need in there with our staffing, with our uh, student response rate. We still have some surveys the parents haven't filled out. So we please, please, please fill that out. You're gonna get notified again because until we have all the students in place, it's very difficult to know what the staffing in the class placement will look like. Uh, we do have some staff that um, have provided some medical documentation that have asked for remote teaching. We think we can accommodate a number of those uh, because it works with some the number of students we have about 75% of our students right now that have opted to return to the in-person in learning. And a, a, a mix of, we have about 400 students right now that have opted for the remote and then a mix of other after that. So uh, we're in a pretty good place, but there's, there's, there's work to be done. We feel like it's cr all of a sudden crunch time. Yeah, so as far as, Monday. It, 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 so what the, the nervousness that may exist in the community too, you have 75% of the students coming back, but it's the, of, the nervousness is about the unknown. And so we'll go over a couple things on that. But the um, first though, as far as what you're, how you're designing the school year and what this starting the school year will look like is based on guidances from the state. Yeah, so we've been getting, uh Frequent, frequent, frequent. We have a lot of uh, protocols that we have to follow from the state, which is fine, which has actually been good for us. Uh, but there are protocols. There is the social distancing within a, a classroom. Uh, there's the protocols about water breaks and mask breaks and things like that. So we're working through all of those within the building. Um, the, the, I suppose, even though it's a lot more work to try to figure out the work to do with the students that are remote, the, the advantage of having them remote is that it's lessening the number of students in classrooms, right? And so uh, we're very lucky in the spacing that we have. We're very lucky in the staffing that we have. Uh, and we've put in some even extra precautions than what the Department of Education. We feel very comfortable with all of the extra precautions. The big thing out there that there is still uh, people worry, there's an anxiety, right? We, we sent our teachers away on March 13th and many of them haven't been back in the school since then. So there is that normal anxiety. Our students, the normal anxiety, they haven't been in the, in the building. Uh, but then the bigger one is to make sure, I know with our, with our union specifically and a lot of the, the staff is uh, the health of the building, right? The, the HVAC systems, I'm learning more about HVACs. I feel like I could go get a job after this. Um, but we've had them assessed. We feel pretty comfortable with the reports. We've gotten the full reports back now. Uh, the uh, union is looking through them. Uh, we'll have John Nelson and the engineer coming to our school committee meeting tonight. Very good. To just assess, but we feel pretty comfortable. The report actually was, we feel, validated what we already knew. Well, because the, the guidelines had minimum standards for air Correct. exchange also. In the, yeah, that's, that's, piece, that's the other piece is that there are no real, it's funny, no specific set standards. So we are meeting and, ex, and surpassing the standards that, uh, the, that the DESC, the Department of Education sent out, that the CDC has sent out. Uh, there are other reports out there and, and things that you should be doing. And so that's, those are the things that we're kind of working on. And we feel very comfortable having had the engineer come in uh, who's, who's, this is his job and this is what he does. So we feel pretty good about being able to meet the, the recommendations that he's making. Very good. The, um, ju just to jump back for a minute too, based on the model that you're using, 
It's you're using the hybrid model. All right. And that's based on what drives the hybrid model. So at, the, at pre-K to six, one of the most important things that we really wanted to try to accomplish, one of our goals was to allow parents that do need to work outside the home to feel comfortable about that. There's a lot of districts that can't do what we've been able to do, and they're doing a pure hybrid where the students come in half the week and are home half the week. We felt pretty strongly that for, the, for that young age group that can't be left home alone, obviously, that this was an opportunity to allow parents to go to work. Uh, at the 7 to 12, so those kids will report four days out of the five. At the grade 7 to 12, it will be the true, true hybrid where we'll have students, half the students will come in Monday and Tuesday, while the Thursday, Friday kids will remote access into the classroom, live access, just like a college classroom, and then they'll flip. And then we have a cohort C, are our high need students, so some of your students that are on pretty significant uh, IEPs, individualized education plans, and students that maybe are English language learners or some of your real need, need students that need that extra help. That's kind of our cohort C, we're calling it. Um, but those students, those typically a seventh, eighth to high school kid can be left home alone and it, it, while they're accessing their education. So that was our, our rationale and our kind of goals as we set out to try to, to develop that program. Very good. And you mentioned as far as the, getting the teachers back into the school too and, and ang ang anxiety associated with that. You know, uh, the town employees, we, we offered the <coughs> testing program as volunteer, but to give them an opportunity to be tested before we walk in. And, and where do we stand with that, with the schools at this point? So similar program, uh, we're still working out some, some final details, but uh, I think we emphasize the importance of doing some type of testing before somebody re-enters uh, the workplace. And, and so the antibody testing program that we had in the municipal that we beta tested and uh, we're going to do the same with some add-ons um, for the public school employees. We're kind of finishing up some final details. I'll hopefully have some, some information for tonight's school committee meeting. I will be there. But again, we're emphasizing the importance of um, not only testing, but with that comes a whole process of education, mm -hmm. right? We're educating our staff expectations. We're managing expectations. We're managing uh, and reminding them of PPE, social distancing, all the key metrics that we want to see to keep the numbers where they're at, zero or one, preferably zero. Uh, as we move forward. So I think we <clears throat> think we are, we're going to uh, move forward and I think we're in a really good place to at least get the, the school year started. Because I know you've spoken with Dr. Bemis about that also. He's familiar with with the uh, proposed testing, but it, as a it's to be utilized as a surveillance uh, program, basically. Correct. Yes. Uh, the, uh, the antibody tests um, are, are great. Uh, the CDC uses them for sort of prevalent studies to, to help to identify cases in the community that may have been uh, missed, either the person was symptomatic and never had the test or they were um, never or had no symptoms at all. And it's, it's, it's definitely helpful to, to identify uh, those cases. And um, yeah. Very good. The, um, as far as the, uh, what about um, the buses, getting kids to school? Oh, yeah. where, where do we stand with that? Yeah, that's, that's, it's funny because there's so, so, so often kind of an afterthought to everyone in education. The primary purpose of us is to educate our children, but uh, there are districts right now that we know of that literally a, the model that they have to open with is being driven by the protocols around a bus, and that's pretty tough. Uh, we're lucky, very, somewhat lucky in Sandwich because we do have a lot of our parents uh, drive their children. Some of them it's because they're on school choice, so they live out of town, they have to do that. Uh, but we also have a lot of parents that have said they are willing and able to drive if we need that. And so that's helping us because for all intents and purposes, we're having the number of kids that can go on a school bus. Um, and, and so that is significant. So we have a brand new bus company this year that was just happening. <laughs> Welcome to Sandwich. <laughs> um, so they have, the, they have last year's roots in a sense and they have where our students are. So they had kind of developed a shell to begin with. And now what we're doing is bumping back in. We, we had asked the parents, again, I, I always feel bad, but another survey, but we needed real commitments about what was happening on the, on the who needed transportation so that they can make final uh, route lists and final class lists. And then what we're doing is every child that goes onto a bus mm -hmm. will have a pass. It's the only way they can get, can get on. They'll have assigned seats. There are the protocols that we have set out there in our plan uh, that the, those, the people that have taken a look at it, they're pretty prescri prescriptive of what because they need to do provides for spacing on the bus also Correct. so it's limited bus capacity at this Correct. point. Correct. It's, it's again probably half or a little less. Uh, it also provides room. One of the concerns we have is because the, the st all students are required to wear a mask on a bus which again is not a bad thing mm -hmm. uh, but the monitoring of that. We can't have a bus driver whose job it is to be driving a bus be 
responsible for that. So we've put out a posting for uh, bus monitors, and we'll see what we get for that, but kind of in the morning, in the afternoon routes, so. To assist with monitoring as far as where this. Their job would be solely to monitor the students on the bus. Let, let's follow that up, because yep. I think as far as, uh, you know, we've, people have obviously seen the startup of schools throughout the country and the press associated with that, the pictures in Georgia of the students packed in the hallway. Yep. We're, not, we're not looking at that no. as far as, you know, you're not opening the doors and just shoving the whole population. Absolutely not. It, the, biggest, the, the bigger issue that you have always in any, any school district is the secondary in the sense of the way you do scheduling. Think back when you were in high school. Part of what we're trying to do is prepare kids to go off into college, and so you provide all different opportunities. You have different academic levels. You have advanced placement. You have honors. You have college prep. So you have all those different levels of classes. So cohorting kids at the secondary is not nearly as possible it is at the Oak Ridge or Forestdale, where those kids literally will stay in the same room with the same teacher all day. Uh, we can't physically do that, and so that was part of the reason for the hybrid at the secondary. Now what we're working on, and, and Mr. Mulcahy and his team are already kind of doing that, is w how will we pass those kids in the hallway? We want to limit the amount of contacts any person has. We've all seen those pictures from Georgia. That cannot be what our hall, first of all, they didn't have masks on. We right. will. Right. That is a significant difference. Uh, but the idea being is that how will we, what other patterns can we use? Do we go outside? Can we, you know, out and in and all those kinds of things that they're already working on to try to make sure that we do not have that? Well, in this, it, really then, this, the success of the school year, how we start this up, you know, this town has done very well as far as the number of cases. We've ran at zero for a while. You know, uh, the opening of the school is dependent upon what goes on in the community. Correct. So, I mean, we could have, you know, a, a number of cases, I will say, in the, um, in the, uh, one of the hospitals or the, or the, uh, adult facilities yes. and all of a sudden that affects our numbers no doubt so it's de it's really dependent upon people need to understand and connect the dots that what it goes on in this community is their behavior mm -hmm. uh, how they conduct themselves impacts whether our schools stay open or not and the success of those schools I, I said to, in my in my parent communication this past week I said uh, I said well the week before this now is really turning into we're at such a time we're two weeks away right it just about for kids coming in this is a true partnership. This isn't just about how a teacher behaves or just a student behaves, even though they're the two seeing each other. This is now how a family behaves at home. We, this has to be a partnership. We, know, we have to really think about, oh, maybe I can't go do this big party at the beach or at my friend's house, because that's gonna have ripple effects to the rest of our community. If we wanna keep the model we're doing and keep our kids in school as long as possible, we need to work together on this. And I, I, I kudos to Sandwich for the numbers that we're at. I think they are taking that seriously. We need to continue to do that. Because the good thing is pretty soon we'll even stop having the visitors that we have to our community because they'll all be going back. Um, and that's gonna lessen, I think, and allow us to even control it more. But it has to be all of us working together. It's a very good point because I think, you know, if we go back to March and April when this group, the COVID group, talked about, um, you know, whether closing town facilities and we left them open saying it was dependent upon people's behavior. Yep. And it was up to the community whether those stayed open or not. Really, it, it, whether the schools stay open or not. This is it. It's up to the community. It, it will because I don't, I, I don't, it will not, they're not going to catch it in the building. It, it will not germinate from there. It's going to come into the building from somewhere else. Right. And so that's really important. There. So as far as, Dr. Uh, Dr. Beam has two thoughts as far as the lower grades versus, you know, your, the high school. You know, uh, Dr. Gould had mentioned that you have those classes in individual, we'll call them pods for this matter, yeah, right. control classroom settings versus the, versus the high school. I mean, if, if we were to have an outbreak, it's is it easy is it easier to control it in one than the other you know the at the lower grade levels we have all the kids in in one room staying in that room for the day and, and interacting with those people you know versus the high school so is it you know where do we need a lot more work do you think done as far as you know educating and, and persistence as far as adhering to the guidelines is it are we looking more at the high school um, as far as as far as the work to, to go ahead and, and, uh, and keep it safer as there. As far as people's behavior, as far as where you know. I, I think um, you know. In, in, Not to throw it under you, but I'm no, just, no, I, I, it's it's it's, I know a, it's, it's a concern that's out. Yeah. There. So the the school reentry task force did a great job uh, coming up with 
the, the series of guidelines of public health measure, measures to try to help prevent the spread. And um, uh, you know, the, 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 first, the first thing is obviously wearing masks uh, at all times. I mean, that's going to significantly limit, um, limit spread, and it's also going to make any, any potential case uh, you know, there's going to there are going to be limited number of exposures if everyone is, is masking, and and the distancing. Um, I mean, it seems to be, you know, the, the guidelines are being followed with with desks uh, placed far enough apart so that the, the students are six are six feet apart um, in the in, in Forestdale and Oak Ridge, um, and then have it, and then in the high school. Uh, you know, as, as long as we we follow these guidelines, we're where we, we limit interaction between um, the students' passages in, in the hallway. Um, again, everyone being masked is going to make a huge difference. Right. That's that's um, that's, that's the that's, biggest key. You see, it is the key. And 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 I and I also also want to emphasize on what what Dr. Gold mentioned is in the community, it's it's going to be extremely important for us to to continue the measures that we've we've been uh, we've been doing: masking, social distancing, limiting large gatherings. Um, because the, the, the single most important, I mean, determinant of opening schools or keeping them uh, and keeping them open is the level of spread in the community, and it's been it's been so low. So I think keeping those numbers low and, and following all the guidelines that have been um, that have been mentioned uh, to minimize spread is 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 you know is going to work. Um, and you know, as as you mentioned, I don't think in the school following these guidelines, there's there's going to be a chance of things spreading within the school. Right. One of the things we did when we talk about, again, that high school, which has been our biggest worry in the sense of the numbers, we took what we do as a very traditional schedule, uh, six to seven periods in a day, brought that down to four. So again, limiting the number of times they will walk out into a hallway. That was significant to us. Uh, so that's uh, trying to find ways, uh, while still trying to accommodate what a, a high school student needs to get into college and to do those things, uh, trying to figure out ways that we can work around that. The, uh, it, as, that, as this fall school uh, year proceeds, you know, you mentioned as far as the testing in the beginning, you're going to have more information on that. Do you, do you see something occurring as the school year, as the school fall, uh, I want to call it the fall semester, yeah. Yeah. as the fall semester goes on? I think for staff, yes. <clears throat> We're not talking about students, just staff right. only. Right. But I think the key to any reopening, and I've watched the NBA, I've watched the bubble stuff, is the ability to test. Right, the ability to test and remind and educate, you know, not just one and done. So, you know, with Dr. Bemis's expertise and and our plan is we want to have a testing plan moving forward. That may pivot as we go, depending on what newer tests become available. Yep. But I think getting in the mindset of the importance of testing and education amongst our staff needs to be reemphasized monthly. And I think that's uh that's the goal. One thing I was going to mention, um, Dr. Bemis and I both have kids that are in school. And people ask me all the time, are you comfortable sending your kids back? And I'll let Dr. Bemis answer for him. But for me, in full disclosure, I have a daughter going to Sturgis and I have a stepson going to Upper Cape. I would send them to Sandwich. I would send them to any of the educational institutions with the caveat that they are social distancing and these measures are being followed. I'm extremely comfortable. Um, with mask wearing and social distancing. We, we've emphasized two examples here, one in the nursing home, where staff were positive from the outside. They came in, they wore masks. It did not spread through the facility. Right. So if we can emphasize masking, and one of the final things I'll mention before I turn it over to Dr. Bemis, I put a grant in, I should find out Friday, we, we put in a grant for 400 masks that say sandwich fire for kids. And, and that would be, they're joining the team, keeping it at zero, that's our goal. Also, 400 individual hand sanitizers that say sandwich fire. Um, if we get that grant, which we'll know on Friday, I think that'll just reemphasize with kids uh, and with staff, you know, please wear the mask. So I'm going to ask Ryan, you know, what, what are your thoughts? You have three younger kids. Yep. Are you comfortable <clears throat> sending your kids? Um, no, I'm, I'm very comfortable. I have two nine-year-old twin girls uh, going to be entering fourth grade this year at Oak Ridge, and my five-year-old son's going to be starting kindergarten at Forestdale. Um, and again, the work that the, the school reentry task force did, in combination with the work that you've done, um, and, and the whole you know COVID team, in regards to um, keeping it, it safe, the, the reentry into the schools, and also I have uh, strong faith that as as we go forward, um, I mean this whole this whole pandemic is is is, is fluid as far as you know what what we're going to be doing for testing, um, and we've been talking a lot about that and and. Uh, you know, knowing that 
going forward, we can have um, appropriate surveillance using you know the appropriate uh, viral tests, you know either PCR or antigen. You know those are the tests that are going to be helpful, and then and then you know, having the antibody testing as well. Um, I'm very comfortable, and I and I you know I, I again I applaud the work that's been done. The um, as far as so let's take one more anxiety off the table here. As as far as you know. As the school year starts, we're a month in, all of a sudden we have a case. Absolutely, yep. Okay, so, it, you know, and I've spoke, we've spoken of this and with Joanne as far as identifying, you know, if we have a case, <clears throat> what does that mean? Does that mean the school shuts down? Right. And, and the answer to that is no, but. You know, right, well, I think that, and I, I, as I ha was having a conversation with one of our staff members yesterday, we have to, we have to be comfortable living in this world of gray a little bit. Uh, that those those of us that like kind of we're type A and we this black and white type of thing it's very difficult and I think what I'll be doing is it depends on the situation very simple example is if I have a, a grade 2 classroom and they're in such a cohort and they have been in that cohort and we can do the contact tracing with that very simply we can close down that classroom and we call the parents and we say okay you're not gonna send them in for X amount of days the teachers gonna teach from home We'll do that as long as everyone's healthy. Right? So in that situation, you're talking of going remote for the class. Just for that class. We're ready to go for that. And so that the, the kids don't miss a beat of the education. It'll be different. It'll be from home. It's a definite impact on the parents. There's no doubt about that. But it will allow our education conti to continue. Now, when you get up into the secondary, it might still be. There might be some depending situations. And, and this is where I will rely on our medical health. All right, here's the situation. Here's what we've got. This is the contact tracing we were able to do. What should we be do? Where should we go at this point? Do we close down, make it up the grade level? Do we, you know, because if you look at seventh grade, for example, the most of them, they're teamed, and do they go around with each other to a point? That's really going to depend on that. Um, and so I think I value the communication we've been able to have, and that's going to be even more important as we go through this. Um, yes, it's easy to just say shut down the district. But that might not be needed at all. Now, your, your school nurses will be involved oh, in that no also. Doubt. No doubt. So, you you know, be probably the first point of contact. Right. So all the school nurses would be involved in that as far as identifying that. So there's no, the thing is, and the reason I bring this up, is there's no black and white. No. There's no easy answer on this as far as yes or no. It's, de it's situation dependent. Correct. And it has to be evaluated very specifically for those situations. Right. But we, we need to make the best decision to make sure, as Dr. Bemis says, too, it doesn't we don't, it doesn't spread. That's in all of our priorities. Um, and at the same time getting, but we are prepared. If we have to send home a group of students, we are prepared to do remote learning. I would prefer not to have to have parents go through that. That's really where we're at. The longer we can keep our kids in school, the better off we all are. Everybody. Very good. So it all comes down to for your teachers and for the, you know, for, for the students or parents, you know, speaking to the students about, I've said this all along, control your space. Yep. Yeah. You know, control your own hand washing, your mask. You know, control that space, and everybody's going to be fine. Well. I think so, too. I mean, again, we've put in the extra precautions. There's nowhere in our protocols that says that we have to buy uh, plexiglass is not the right term because I know that's not a good fire thing, but there's the other material that we're using. We Nowhere. We decided to do that for all of our staff. It adds a layer of comfort and security, uh, of protection, and it's clear, and so the teacher can still teach. And we think of the littlest ones who need to see their teacher's mouth move that's an opportunity because we've got this barrier behind there um, and we've bought the face shield. So it's, it's not, you can't use the face shield when you're out and about sitting with a kid at their desk, but you can use it when you're behind this barrier. And that's really important. If we do the things that we're supposed to do in our building and we rely on the, fam the families in the community to do what they need to do outside, it's not going to be perfect. No one ever says that. There's not zero risk in anything we're going to do. Right. But we're going to get as close to zero risk as we possibly can. Very good. Does anyone else have anything they want to add to that? No, nope. we'll end on that note with Dr. Gould and uh, thank you very much. Good luck for this coming school season. Uh, questions are always welcome to those who are here and uh, always you know, can be considerate of others, protect your space, be safe. <laughs>